tell me if hair metal is a better or worse term than these? Light metal, glam metal, melodic metal, false metal, poodle bands, <laughs> nerf metal, pop metal. Pop metal, metal was one pop. that I see. Yeah. Okay. All of these suck. Welcome back. It's Lauren and Joe from Loudwire, and we're here to talk about something that is kind of been a long debated topic um, about hair metal. And the reason Say we're making that don't call it that. <laughs> the reason we are making this video is because we published an article last summer asking what is hair metal because that's something that a lot of people, especially younger generations, want to know. We provided a lot of evidence and arguments and some people didn't take too well to it um sebastian bach and eddie trunk in particular are two people who kind of started a conversation on twitter x and so this is we didn't have a chance to kind of really give our side of the story and eddie trunk mentioned it in one of his shows on sirius xm and so this is kind of going to be our response to that um all respects to Eddie Trunk. There's, you know, no, <laughs> no ill will here. Yeah, I remember when that happened, everybody was kind of blowing us up like, oh, did you see they're talking about Lauren's piece on Eddie Trunk? Or like, oh, like, that's crazy. Um, and it's been like a bit of a debate about whether this is like a derogatory term or a slur and, you know, whether it's actually negatively impacting bands' abilities to get booked. But first, let's start and go all the way back to kind of like where, what the roots of hair metal are, which of course started in the 70s with a lot of glam rock, right, Lauren? Yeah, there was Mark Bolin with T-Rex and Kiss, a lot of people cite as one of the, you know, early prototype bands of hair metal in a way, because a lot of their show was about their image. And that kind of is one of the underlying factors of what hair metal became later on, is that the image was not as important as the music, but it was definitely a focus and it definitely made them stand out from other subgenres that had existed previously yeah you had the new york dolls which were a huge influence on twisted sister they kind of grew up right around the same scene twisted sister sweating it out in the clubs uh for a long time and d snyder is actually one of the people who's pretty supportive uh of this idea of calling it hair metal and it's a term that you know as kind of revisionist history we like to lump a lot of things into categories because it makes it easier to talk about and to identify large groups of things especially when you're talking amongst other people or certain eras and things like that so as far as like what hair metal is and being something negative like i understand why somebody wouldn't want to be called hair metal right to reduce everything you did artistically to just being a, a hairstyle, uh, like teased hair uh, with lots of like hairspray and whatever. Like that's not very cool. But I think as time has come around, especially now, like we've seen hair metal. I mean, it's widely embraced. These albums sold millions and millions and millions of copies. Uh, so like clearly this is resonating with a lot of people and it's resonating with more generations. Um, I don't think that the generation that grew up with it and lived through it gets to define what it is uh, forever. In order for something to be timeless, it needs to be adopted by new generations. Otherwise, it's just a fad if those generations don't come around and adopt it. And I'm sorry, the Motley Crue, Def Leppard, and Poison Stadium Tour. Uh, did anybody view that as not hair metal? Uh, was that a big win for some other genre? I think that proves unequivocally that hair metal is timeless and you know we can call it this because it's just what it is like what else do you call it let's look at some other terms that are hair metal hold on i'm gonna read from wikipedia here the uh -oh. most credible source on the internet ever <laughs> uh sociologist diana weinstein points to the large numbers of terms that were used to describe more commercial forms of heavy metal which she groups together as light metal Ooh, and it gets so much worse so like lauren i'm gonna read these off one by one and you tell me if hair metal is a better or worse term than these let's go light metal better or worse better okay hair metal is better than light metal is hair metal metal better than glam metal i think those could be interchangeable but i will say that i think a lot of people might be turned off by the word glam so i think i would still say the hair is better than glam all right melodic metal that's just a confusing one yeah, it is. False metal. Is that better or worse than hair metal to be called false metal? Uh, way worse. Are you kidding? <laughs> Poodle bands. 
Nerf metal. Pop metal. Pop metal, metal was one pop. that I see. Yeah. Okay. All of these suck. Hair metal <laughs> is way better. So unless you've got something better to call it, uh, I think we're just going to roll with hair metal. I think maybe like party metal would be cool. But then then again, like some of the artists weren't releasing only party songs. And and what I want to stress just for everybody listening to this video, just to keep in mind throughout this, you can have your opinions. You can disagree with us. Absolutely. And we welcome that. We want you to share how you feel. But were paleontologists around when dinosaurs were walking the earth? No. And they know quite a bit of information about that. And they're going to continue to pass that on. And we're going to continue to study more of it. So if younger people myself included when i was a little girl i was about nine years old and i was watching metal mania on vh1 classic and that's how i discovered I hosted by eddie trunk yes and and <laughs> that was how i discovered what was known as hair metal and i didn't think anything bad of it i thought oh oh wow okay yeah all these guys have puffy hair but like i like the sound of it and it really resonated with me as a young person it was very palatable music and it helped me get into all of the stuff that I got into as I grew up. I was a big fan of White Snake and Rat and Warren when I was 10 years old while everybody else was listening to Warp Tour bands and pop punk yeah. and everything. So it really kind of helped me expand my tastes and grow up with the music. So I don't have any negative feelings towards it. Yeah, uh, I've been listening to hair metal like literally since I was in the womb. I guess I was two years old putting Poison VHS tapes that were my mom's in the VCR to watch them because like, that's what I wanted to do at two years old. Uh, so I've always had a really positive association with it. Uh, it's super riffy. And that really drove me to a lot of other areas of metal because I, I identified with the guitar playing and the riffs and the soloing and, and all that good stuff. And it's really a good point what you said about the dinosaurs. Like you didn't have to live through them to know what's up. Like nobody had to live under King Tut to be an expert on ancient Egypt, you know? So it, it's not like there's no precedent for being able to revisit something. Like I've been a fan of Iron Maiden for almost half of their professional career which to me at 34 feels really weird. Uh, but I've been a fan for half the band's career. So like, I think it's totally validated for me to speak as an authority figure uh, on that subject matter. But again, returning that idea of something being timeless. And if you're timeless, like that's what's going to help. <laughs> that's the staying power of all this. And I guess this is where it gets a little tricky with what Sebastian Bach said that uh, he said last year in response to your piece, Lauren, uh, what is hair metal? He said it's basically the reason that he's home all summer, not playing festivals with all the other bands in Europe. And he's just kind of working the, the fair circuit in the United States. Is that because he's called hair metal? Like, are we pinning that 100% on that? Because I see hair metal getting booked, you know, prominently, but it's usually when it's the band. And that's what we've seen a lot of artists, uh, even in hair metal, Rat in particular, fighting over the name. And the reason for that is because the band name gets booked. They've got the higher guarantee and they've got the name that to move up higher up on the bill and sell tickets. As a solo artist, like other than Ozzy, the amount of solo careers that have taken off are not numerous. I mean, Jeff Tate. From Queensryche, Rob Halford's solo career in the 90s, like it was cool, but it didn't explode. It, even Dee Snider himself, his solo career, he's just happy anybody's listening to it. To push further on that point, even though the, the bands are getting the bookings, if the bands had the majority of the original lineup and the original vocalist was back and it was Skid Row with Sebastian Bach, Skid Row with Sebastian Bach would sell massive compared to yeah. Skid Row as they are now. And that's just an ugly truth. Warrant, they're not going to get booked the same way they would if Jenny Lane hadn't passed away. Eddie Trunk, in his argument, said, why does Guns N' Roses get to sell out stadiums? Because Axl Rose and Slash hadn't spoken in 23 years, and they got back together. When Guns N' Roses was By playing... popular demand. When Guns N' Roses was playing in 2014, I remember it was a couple hours away from me in Pennsylvania. They played a smaller scale venue when it was Axel and the Chinese Democracy Crew. Yeah, they still did pretty well, but they weren't selling out stadiums and they weren't able to go on tour for eight years straight until Slash and Duff McKagan rejoined the band. So that argument to say that it's 
it's a phrase alone is keeping them from these opportunities. No, get the band back together if you really want the opportunity that everybody else is having, and then it'll be look the same for you. Yeah, and going back to what you said about, you know, the original members or having some of the classic members now of course there are cases where it's like the drummer is the only original member yeah and there's everybody else touring uh even leonard skinner right now no original members uh but it's really you know how are they able to sell it to the fans of course the name is always going to help that's why everybody drains their bank accounts going to court fighting each other over that name guns and roses are a really weird one because they get called hair metal and like i don't know why because no. the style, it just sounds like a, you know, 80s Aerosmith. Uh, well, not the 80s. It sounds like 70s Aerosmith as in like, the 80s. You know, played by the next generation in the 80s. A lot how people hate it when this comparison gets brought up. But Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen, uh, he was kind of like took that mentality and put that 80s filter through it. It's kind of the same thing with Guns N' Roses. Like they're just a rock and roll band. So going to get very passionate about Guns N' Roses here. I will say that I can understand where people make the association at first. Yes, they, they teased they teased their hair. Watch any of their YouTube videos from 1986 playing at the Roxy. Axel had the teased hair. In the Welcome to the Jungle video, Axel had the teased hair. So in the beginning, they were capitalizing on that image because they saw all the other bands on the Sunset Strip doing that. And they did that. And they were also being pushed, I'm sure, by record labels to do that. But... There is something different and heavier and grittier and bluesier in the sound than if you compare it to some of those other bands. And to further elaborate on that, some of, some of the, the bands that we call hair metal didn't only release hair metal albums, if that makes sense. So some of them mm -hmm. evolved their sound and changed. Some of them later tried to sound more grungy in the 90s to fit in with that. So yes, they're, we, we call them a hair metal band for ease, for convenience. but that people have made arguments that they were bands like I wouldn't consider the song Dr. Feelgood a hair metal song. That song is heavy. There's a lot yeah, of songs actually on Dr. Feelgood that I don't think I would consider hair metal. I don't think I would consider Skid Row hair metal, but no, with, definitely not. With Guns N' Roses, what a lot of people have pointed out to me, Matt Pinfield, who lived through it, <laughs> um, is that Guns N' Roses kind of served as the, the bridge between hair metal and grunge in a way. The Guns N' Roses kicking down the door thing um, for a change was a really welcome thing because we needed danger in rock and roll um, again. But it was the thing that opened the door for the next movement at the same time. As humans, we love absolutes and we love putting things in boxes and categorizing them. It makes it easier for us to digest and process large amounts of information and make it easy to compare things we can compare thrash to death metal to hair metal to black metal we could argue about the nuanced difference between them but it immediately sets us up to be able to facilitate debate and conversation which is like kind of the only thing that rock and metal fans do is just argue about shit and a lot of the time the artists don't like it because they don't like to be compared to anybody else and i think a lot of them don't understand that it's really just like you said for marketing purposes i mean spoke to a lot of the a couple of the grunge musicians and they admitted that they didn't like the word grunge when it first came up but a lot of them realize now kim thiles said grunge as a term nobody liked that everyone thought oh this is a marketing thing this is this is a way to file seattle on a retail display in a record store we thought that's it but people initially we just rejected the term like grunge but eventually we all just came to embrace it it's just an easy reference especially if you're talking to your parents what kind of music do you do grunge oh like pearl jam or nirvana yeah like that and the same could but, be said about the hair metal bands and then the same thing happened with new metal none of those artists like new metal either and then now in today's society as new metal is back on the rise Artists from the musicians in Corn are saying, we are proud to have spearheaded a movement. Even if we didn't like the term back then, we like it now and we're proud. Yeah, and it's just words. Look deeper at what these words represent. It means you are part of something significant, something massive, something that matters 40 years later. Like, it's scary to think it's 2024 and just a few years, like all the stuff from the 80s is going to be turning 50. D, half a century old for this stuff <laughs> and it still rips and like that matters to be able to call something one thing and then to have that stay for 50 years whether you like the term or not understand and appreciate what it represents 
It means that your band had value, that your band still has value, that what you did actually matters beyond that time that it got popular. And like, what is cooler than that? Then way after you're gone, everybody's still going to be listening to these songs and celebrating it as hair metal. Like, that's cool. I think so. I don't know. I, I was just born in the 80s. I, was, I spent six months in the 80s. Uh, if you don't count the womb, I guess. Uh, second time we brought up me in the womb this video. That's a weird one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so last week we did a video warning all of you about the scams going on in rock and metal. It's nonstop. People tried to scam a bunch of bands, pretend that they were writers from Loudwire. Uh, crazy, crazy stuff. People getting catfished, thinking that they're dating either Brett Michaels or Nikki Six, actually dating both of them. Uh, so let's read some of the best comments on scams from last week. This should be pretty juicy. Kiss belongs on the scammers list. They've had 16 final tours. <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh. <laughs> I think my favorite one is uh, I got a message from Dave Mustaine saying he needed me to send him money to get out of Africa. I sent him thousands of dollars. Seems legit. I hope that person is kidding. <laughs> they, that definitely seems like a troll comment. <laughs> Actual bands are scammers by way of a 30 second meet and greet package for three grand then push you to the private merch booth for an 80 dollars shirt i actually pushed back on this one because i don't think meet and greets are a scam i think that because a band suddenly had their revenue streams dry up by way of album sales because you as fans aren't buying the albums at least not as much as you used to and then you know they the venues are taking a certain percentage of their merchandise Touring's getting way expensive. How are they supposed to cover the bills and actually like be profitable, especially for veteran bands? It's still not that easy to do that. You got to make up the gap and you do it through meet and greets. If somebody wants to spend the amount of money that's charged for meet and greet, that is their choice. Nobody is forcing anyone to do that. And everybody I've talked to who's gone to a meet and greet was like, yeah, it was awesome. I got my picture. I got to talk to like my favorite band. For everyone going, it seems to be worth the money. And if it's not worth the money, I mean, you would know pretty much immediately what the package is going to be. And if that's something you want to spend your money on. So. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> we're going off on a tangent here, but yeah, let us know what you guys rant. let us know what you guys think. You know, what what do you define hair metal as? Who do you consider hair metal? What are your favorite hair metal albums? What are your favorite non hair metal albums by hair metal bands? Let's just like talk about it all. And uh don't age don't be ageist <laughs> yeah yeah well that felt really good to get out there thanks everyone for watching like comment subscribe check out the loudwire merch store and we'll see you next week bye